on this episode, Christian is tempted. But now I'm tempted, right? Now I'm tempted. We invent shwaves. Shwaves? Yeah, let's call it shwaves. More particles. I'm gonna create more particles. More particles. This is our life now. Oh, I'm having so much fun with those explosions. <laughs> Oh, oh, hi there. Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to the Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to our little shmup. And um, yeah, let's look at what our shmup is doing and let's think about what we're gonna do today. This is episode 16. We just created this beautiful explosion last episode. Mm, it's beautiful. We spent a lot of time on those collision effects now. And so what's the best thing to do in this episode? Spend even more time on collision effects. <laughs> So if we go to the to-do list, we see that, you know, we had like the procedural explosion that is ticked off. We finished the procedural explosions. Perfect. But there's still like this, this point here, bullet collision effects. That's something I want to deal with. And I generally want to spend this episode a little bit of wrapping up the collision effects, making sure that the collision effects are something that we can leave behind in good conscience. <sighs> but yeah, as you can see, you can spend a lot of time with those effects and maybe you should at some point but maybe not too much. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So, um, bullet collision effects, something I want to deal with, um, but also something I want to add maybe to this to-do list is um, my own ship exploding. Uh, uh, let's call it ship explosion. Um, and what else? Um, maybe sparks. Maybe sparks. Maybe, I'm not sure. Like if there's going to be time left, maybe we're going to take a look at the sparks, okay? Good. Let's just start with the ship explosion. So I want my own ship to explode when I get hit because right now nothing happens. I just like, there's a sound effect, but I don't see an explosion here. So let's do that real quick. Uh, we're going to go into the update function. You already know how this works. And uh, actually this was a part of the doggy zone at some point. So if you did that in the doggy zone, I'm I'm happy. Uh, you already know where this is going. Uh, where is it? There we go. So hmm, so anyway, this is drawing particles actually, and I can already tell. Like I don't really like this. I don't really like this huge, huge thing with a with a with a huge sequence of if statements here, right where we're drawing the particles, because it's kind of like really takes away space and makes it very, very difficult to read. Uh, we're going to think about this in a second. Um, but yeah, actually I wanted to go in the update function. That's where I was going. And I'm going to look here. This is where my uh, the enemy is exploding when I hit them with the bullet. I'm going to copy this out. And I'm going to here where go here where the ship is hitting the enemies. And here is where collision with the enemy happens. And here I can just dump in the, the same code. Uh, I have to switch the my end to ship. Otherwise everything is cool and can stay the same. Boom. <laughs> Good. So, but now I'm tempted, right? Now I'm tempted. I, I don't like how the ship's explosion is the same explosion as the enemy explosion. Uh, I kind of maybe want to have a different colored explosion for my own ship than uh, the explosion for the enemy. So I want to maybe have a custom explosion for the ship. And I was thinking about how to do this. Let's just make the change the color of the explosion. Let's just turn it blue. And this gives, gives us an opportunity to clean up this part here, which I didn't like so much. Um, so I think this part here is something that's really good to be kind of like removed and, and changed into a, a function. Uh, so something that we can do here is going to, um, uh, we're going to do something like uh, PC equals um, red part age, something like this. And then we supply the age as uh, an argument. Red partage. <laughs> We're going to take, I, I don't know if that's a good name, but let's, let's just, just keep, or let's call this a page, part H or page, page underscore red. Yeah. Okay. Page red. Okay. Um, so this basically, yeah, we, um, 
we're going to have to create a function that um, takes an h as an argument and returns a color, right? Um, yeah, we can maybe even speed this up a little bit. Now well, let's let's just let's just copy this stuff here out. And we're going to take all this stuff out, and we're going to create this function. I'm going to dump all of my our, all our own functions in uh, in tab one for now. Uh, I'm going to go to tab one. I'm going to scroll all, all, all the way to the bottom. I'm going to create a function. Uh, oop. Yeah, I'm going to paste, paste this in, yes, but I also wanted, also want to call this um, page underscore red. Open close parentheses for now. And, and I'm fixing the indentation here. And you can see that an end is missing here, so I'm going to add an end. Perfect. Um, so the page red function, and uh, we're already using it, we're supplying it an argument, and I'm going to actually uh, uh, take that argument, receive the argument, and I'm going to put it in the variable. So this argument, I'm going to call this maybe page, particle h. Uh, and um, then we need to kind of like tweak the if statements here, and every time you see the myp.h, I'm going to replace that with page. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Now the only problem is we have like this PC variable and we have to kind of return this because that's how we use the function here, right? We use the function, we take the function, we supply it with an argument and we take what the like what the function returns and we put that in, in the PC variable here, in this local PC variable here. So we kind of have to return something at the end here. And it's gonna be, well, it's gonna be this PC, right? Just so we don't get the PCs confused, I mean, it's a different PC here than it is here. There's a local variable PC, but you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna create a different variable so just we don't don't, don't get confused. Uh, I'm gonna create a variable called local call, and I'm gonna start with seven. And every time we have PC here, we're gonna replace it with a call, and then we're gonna return call at the end. That's it. Okay, so now all these ugly if statements were kind of like banned and encapsulated in its own function, put to the side, and uh, um, and yeah, we can and this function where we actually draw, we can concentrate on actually drawing the particles and manipulating them. Uh, we can uh, tighten things up a little bit here. I think maybe we could we could do something like this. Uh, instead of starting with seven, we can directly initialize the variable with page red. That's okay. We could actually probably already um, dump this whole page red directly into the circ fill, but uh, I'm gonna do something in a second here, so maybe uh, things will change here. Let's just see if this even works. Maybe we made a mistake. No, no, it, it, it works. It works. It works all right. Oh yeah, good. I was thinking, by the way, about explosion. I think this initial flash, this is like the initial flash we had, right? The initial big circle. I think it needs to be bigger because I hardly see it. Yeah, that's better. Um, maybe 10, maybe 10 was good. Yeah, 10 was good. I think it's better. Okay, good. So, I wanted maybe, maybe my um, explosion, the explosion of my ship to be blue. I kind of like want to do that. So how are we going to pull this off? Well, we have like this huge function here, right? That creates the explosion. And we could create like a second explosion that just makes a blue explosion or something like this. Um, let's just start at, at the core. Basically we would have like different particles, right? And again, we could like duplicate our, our particle system the part system we could have like a different array for blue particles but i don't like that i kind of like we have like this whole this this whole code about you know drawing particles and so forth let's just reuse it and just like use slightly different colors right so for example something we could do here is we could have we could go my p dot blue equals true right something like this and so if the particle, uh, particles property blue, that's the particles here, right? If, if the, the, we have particles that are set to blue, 
then we're going to use slightly different colors for those particles. Uh, and this allows us to reuse the entire system, maybe even reuse the entire explosion function here uh, to create different colored explosions, blue or not blue explosions. Uh, and I'm going to actually do this because we're spawning two particles at two times. We're spawning the initial explosion and then we're spawning like the many little particles here. So I want to make sure that in both cases we set the blue to true just to test it out. Right now, if I run this, nothing will happen because we're not actually reacting to this property. Okay. So let's go to the draw function and let us actually react to this property. So we just did this here, right? Um, this is PC. This is the local variable that controls the color of the particle. Uh, uh, I'm going to restore it original uh, where it was PC equals seven, seven and then we're going to set PC to uh, page red. So here we can check if the particle that we're about to draw, if that's a blue particle or not. So we're going to see, say, if my p dot blue, if it's set to true, then uh, something will happen. Else, uh, we're going to set it to the PC to page red. But if it's blue, we're going to set the PC to 12. We're just going to set it to, to blue and we're going to think about, you know, tweaking, making it pretty and so forth later. Okay, so we have, we have, we are, all the particles are, that are set to, uh, where the property blue is set to true, are going to be uh, rendered in completely blue. And yeah, uh, this is the blue color that we're looking for. Okay, save, run. Well, that's a blue explosion. It's not a pretty explosion, but it's definitely blue. Okay. So now I want to maybe first take care of the fact that, you know, right now the every explosion has been turned into blue, but I want some explosion now to be blue and other explosion to be red. So I want to deal with that. Um, and the way we can do this here is we can reuse the entire explosion function. Uh, by uh, adding a third argument. And that third argument is going to be something like is blue. Is blue. Is the argument blue or not? Uh, is the explosion blue or not? Right? And we're going to dump this argument, this third argument. Uh, we're going to dump this straight into the blue property of those particles. So if we're going to set the third argument to true, then all of the particles will have true uh, set. Uh, when all the particles will have their blue property set to true. And if the third argument is set to uh, false, then all of the particles will have their blue property set to false. Um, just setting the, changing the true here into is blue. Right, so the third argument in the explode function uh, is just dumped straight into the blue uh, property. Okay, let's run this. Surprisingly, this works. And I think this is a bit surprising, right? Because we never actually supply any third argument ever, right? Like that, we never do that. Uh, when you hear exploding the ship, it's just two arguments. F first argument, second argument, there's no third argument. There's no true or false that we're supplying. Same here. First argument, second argument, there's no third argument. So why didn't, like, why is everything red now, right? Like, the, huh? well, I wanted to maybe explain this a little bit because this is actually really interesting here. So <clears throat> how do I explain this? So um, we talked about Boolean variables and um, Boolean variables can be true or false, right? And we also talked about nil, right? Nil was kind of like the special value that variables can be if they're completely unassigned, if there's nothing in the variables, not even like a zero, just like completely unassigned, empty variable. In a lot of cases in, P in Pico8, um, false, false, like the Boolean value false, is treated the same as nil. So if, the if there's nothing in the variable, quite often that's the same thing as if the variable was set to false. And that's what happened here. We called the function, 
Where is it? Update. We called the function explode with two arguments, with x and y, but not a third argument. Over in the actual explode function, where we receive the, the arguments, we have x, y, and third argument is blue. If that function was called without the third argument, then is blue is set to is set to nil. There is just like it's completely not set because there is no third argument. So is blue is blue here is set to nil. And then this nil is then carried over and assigned to the property is my p dot blue. It's just set to nil. I mean, it was nil before, but now it's also nil, still nil. And then here, when we're actually drawing the particles and we're checking if the property blue was set, well, that blue is nil. And that's kind of the same thing as if it was set to false. So uh, this PC equals 12, that's never fired because it's my P dot blue is nil. Uh, instead, this else thing is fired where we're treating it as a red particle. That's, that's, the, that's the gist here. So basically, it's kind of like really neat if you, uh, especially for these kinds of situations where you can create functions that have a variable name, uh, number of arguments that can, have, can be used in different ways. And you've already seen this. This is nothing new. You've seen that you can print, you know, hello world. Uh, the print function with one argument, but you can also print uh, hello world, you know, 5, 10, right? You can supply three arguments or one argument. You can like, if you can decide and depending on how many arguments you supply, they, uh, the functions will behave slightly different. And that's kind of like the same thing here where you have like these arguments and you can fill in them in or not. And if they're not filled in, you will get different behaviors. Just on a, on a reminder, so nil quite often is the same thing as false when it comes to like these kinds of if statements things. And conversely as well, and that's really confusing, if there is some value that's quite often treated as true. So like even one or two or hello, like the string hello is often treated as true. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna get to there. If that happens again, I will I will remind you. Okay, so in this case, we're kind of like taking advantage of the fact that nil is treated uh, treated as false, um, and we kind of like have like this very flexible explosion function. And now, when we when our ship explodes here, uh, no, wait, in the update function, when our ship explodes here, uh, where the ship collides with enemies. There's the explosion here. Here we can supply a third argument, comma, true. And that argument, the third arguments will get dumped into the particles. Those particles will all get set uh, blue equals true. And now we can have a blue explosion, but also when we shoot at the enemies, they will explode red. Okay, so now we have the same function explosion function that creates blue or red explosions. Perfect. Now all I want to do now is just to tweak the colors a little bit because I set this all to just regular blue. I don't like that. I What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tab number one. I'm going to copy this entire function, this page red. I'm going to create a second function called page blue. Uh, page blue. And I'm going to tweak all of those colors here. So the first color is 10. Uh, that is 10. That is this yellow. Uh, I'm going to turn this into a six. Then the second color, that's color number nine. That's going to be this orange. I'm going to turn this into the this an intense blue. Uh, the next color is 10 at uh, eight. That's going to be red. I'm going to turn that into... How do I want to skip immediately into, into the dark blue? Maybe I'm going to turn this into 13. 13, and then um, I'm going to turn things into this um, one. 
one one something like this this didn't work because we're not using this function yet <laughs> okay so let's take this function and let's uh, use it here page blue right so if we have blue particles we're using the page blue function and if we have red particles or you know what we don't have blue particles we are default to the red function oh yeah that's a nice blue explosion it looks good good perfect blue explosions good so ship is exploding let us go uh, down the list um, so i want to have bullet collision effects and i already talked about this earlier um, i like uh, how we the enemy flashes white when you hit them that's good but i think we should go above and beyond in these situations the bullet disappears and i want to have an explanation for why the bullet disappears and for this i probably will cre gonna create a completely new type of particle so to speak or like an effect and I'm gonna call this, um, I'm, let's call this wave, like shock wave, or, or maybe swave, swaves, shwaves, yeah, let's call this shwaves, shock waves. Um, so a shwave, <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> um, it's basically gonna be a little circle that uh, that gets bigger up to a certain size and then when it gets to a certain size it fades out and that's it that, that's a shwave <laughs> shwave oh so good and it's not even moving it's gonna be just stationary um right 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 so let us first deal with the task of drawing shwaves <laughs> um I'm gonna draw it uh, underneath the particles. I wanna draw them underneath the particles. Uh, so drawing shway. <laughs> I don't know why I find it so funny. I'm sorry, it's so good. Um, right, so we're gonna go through all of the shwaves. Is it? Um, wait, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not the German shway. It's American shwaves. Um, and then it's gonna be my sh or my S SW. My my SW. Okay, let's go with my SW. So um yeah, just variable names, right? We're just going through all of the shwaves. Um we're setting each shwave to my SW and then executing the following code. Um this is the draw function. Yeah, that's the draw function. We're just gonna do a circ a circ, not a circ fill. That's something that we had here. That's a, that's a filled circle. We're just gonna do a circ. Uh, my sw uh, dot x, my sw dot y. We need an x and y, and we need a size. My sw dot size. Or actually, it's gonna be. Should I call it size or R? I'm gonna call it R, radius. Now the color I'm gonna set to white. We're gonna deal with the color later. For now, that's all I need. Okay. Um, now what I want to do is I want to create a basic shwave. Uh, and that for that, I'm gonna go in my tools page here. I'm gonna go all the way down here and I'm gonna create a new function, something like uh, s small <laughs> sh wave. <laughs> um, so uh, and we're gonna it has it's gonna have two arguments the x position and y position. It's gonna be a very similar function to the way we have here an explosion. We have explosion x and explosion y. We're gonna basically do the very similar things. Um, uh, S H Y. And again, we're gonna use the same, I just like, like reusing the same same variable name. So we're gonna go local mice shwave, um, open close uh, curly brackets. And then we're gonna go my shwave dot x equals equals shix. And my shwave dot y equals sh. And my shwave dot 
R, it has to have a radius. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna set the radius here. I'm gonna set it to five and just to see something. And then uh, shway and add shwaves, comma, my swirl. So we're adding this little object that we created and we're dumping it into, into the shwaves function, uh, shwaves array. That's basically it. I just want to also want to actually call this function. So this function is going to get called when uh, a bullet hits an enemy. Uh, so this is going to be update function. Collision with the enemy with the bullets. And yeah, when we're colliding, uh, we're deleting the bullet. And this is where we're going to create a little shwave, small shwave um, uh, at the position where the bullet was. Uh, bulls dot x bulls uh, no my bull my bull dot x my bull dot y okay these are the shwaves now they're completely not animated and they don't die <laughs> so that's a bit of a problem but otherwise hmm perfect perfect let's deal with the fact that they're supposed to be animated so the radius is set to five, but actually it should be set to zero. Uh, and um, the my shway should have like a destination radius. So dr destination radius, and that's going to be five. So um, uh, I want uh, my shockwave to to get bigger until yeah until it reaches that that target. Or maybe I should call it targ r, targ r or TR target radius. Yeah, let's call it TR target radius. So we're gonna grow the radius of the shockwave until it reaches five, and then we're gonna make the shockwave disappear. Um, right. And then we're gonna draw, go actually and draw function again. Yeah, because the, the again, these are particles and they are not gameplay, gameplay relevant. So it's okay to animate them in the draw function as with the particles. Uh, it's a type of particle that we're creating here. Um, and one pop option would have been to extend the particles that we have here, that we already have here, to to also draw shwaves. But I thought it's the shwaves are kind of like the very unique from the regular particles. I'm, I'm just going to create a whole new object brand for that. Okay, so we're going to go my sw um, dot r plus equals, and we're going to add something to the to the radius. And then we're going to go if my sw.r is greater and if the radius is greater than my sw.tr um, uh, tar target radius, right? Just want to make sure yeah, target radius. So if we are uh, surpassed our target radius, then, and this is where we're going to delete uh, the um, from the schwaves. Uh, we're going to delete the <laughs> my sw. So this is where the shwaves get too big. We're going to delete the shwave. And just let's see how that looks. Okay, you can see like little like like pawn effects. Like little, uh, little... Something I don't like here is that the shwaves are appearing at the wrong spot. And you have to get to down to the bottom of that problem. It's weird because we do spawn them uh, at the position where the bullet is. And maybe we need to do the same thing with the, as with the um, enemies where we add four to the position because again, uh, the bullet's position is always at the top left corner of the sprite and we want the shwave to emanate from the center of the bullet. So we need to add four to kind of like move the bullet um, center of the shwave at the center of the bullet. Yeah, that's, that looks better. Maybe the bullets, um, the shwaves have to um, animate faster, so I'm going to add one every frame. Maybe even faster, I'm going to add two. Uh, maybe also when I create the, uh, the, um, the shwaves, I maybe want to already start with a radius of one. Um, I, uh, I feel like they, it takes too long for them to grow. I want, I want to see them kind of... Open. Oh yeah, that looks better. 
Uh, maybe back to one. Uh, yeah, that's Um, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, maybe let's give them, uh, let's just experiment with a little bit. I just want to see how it looks when I give them different target values. Yeah, these are, this is not good. This is, this is, they are too big in this. What if I give them smaller target values? Three. Yeah, that's better. Let us give them a, a, a bigger starting value and something like three and six. Let's see how that works. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, now it's, it's no longer doesn't look like um, the enemy is absorbing the shots. Um, but you kind of have like a bit of a bit of, a, a bit of an explosion on the bullet, basically. I think that's better. We could see um, it. Maybe it makes sense if it's yellow. If the explosion is yellow, um, maybe that will um, that will uh, create more of a connection between the shwave and the, the bullet. Nah, that doesn't look good. Uh, what about nine? Yeah, maybe nine is good. Uh, something I want to do is I want to store the color of the shwave in the, sh in the shwave. So I'm going to do something like this. And then here we'll be drawing the shwave. I'm going to actually get the, the color from, from the actual shwave. And I'm gonna, you're going to see why in a second. Yeah, that looks good. I think the orange looks good. It kind of made, like it really looks like as if the bullet is 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 bursting basically. That's good. That's good. I like it. Uh, what if we start with two? I just want to really see a different, different variation on this, and then the target is going to be five only. No, I don't like this. I think we need to go to six. Three, six was a good combination. Uh, because I, with me, like, um, I want the, the shockwave to have like um, kind of like the size of the bullet, so it kind of looks as if the bullet is kind of bursting. Okay. Now I want to use. I want to try to use the same. Uh, I'm going to create a big shockwave when the enemy explodes to kind of add to the explosion. So it's going to be big shwave. And I'm going to keep everything the same, except the radius is going to stay like this. And the target radius is going to be like really big, like something like 30. Um, otherwise, the same function, basically. And then when the update happens, uh, where is it? Where the yeah, when a collision ends with bullets, when the explosion happens, um, well, actually, then this would be actually an explosion. So we're actually gonna go to the tap number one. We're gonna go to the explosion. Mm, so after all of the particles have been created, I'm gonna do a big shwave, and it's gonna be at this position. Of the, posi uh, the position where the explosion actually happens, I'm gonna also add a big shwave. And see, just, just see how, if that in, in, maybe enhances the explosion. Oh, maybe. The explosion is a bit too slow. Um, so let us um, do something like this. My SW, uh, that's a small sh um, shwave. Uh, we're gonna do a speed. And the speed is going to be this, kind of like how fast the radius grows. So usually it's going to be one, but with the big explosion, it's going to be, I don't know, like uh, three or something. 
And then here in the draw function, where we actually, um, when we're growing the radius, and that's where we're gonna take the speed uh, uh, speed property from, from the shwave. And we're gonna use the speed property from the shwave to grow the radius of the shwave. So the little ones, oh yeah. Haha. <laughs> oh, this is good. I'm gonna t tweak the speed a little bit. Uh, or maybe the size even. Uh, I'm gonna maybe t break it down to 25 and maybe the speed to 3.5 or something like this. And like this three just now. Yeah, okay, yeah. These, these look like fun explosions. Uh, I'm gonna maybe set the color of the explosion um, to seven of the big wave. Yeah, that's better. It makes the explosion feel a bit more violent. I like that. All right, these are really nice explosions. I like it. Good. How far are we in this episode? Do we have some time left? Ah. Oh. You know what? I, I I wanted to do this, so I'm gonna do this real quick. Um, so, bullet collision affection, uh, bullet collision effects is finished. Um, I wanted to add sparks. So let's try to do sparks. And the question is, if this is gonna be a particle, or, or if we're gonna create a separate particle for this, or if we're gonna use the existing ones. I think for this one, we. Yeah, let's use the existing ones. Can we even like? Do we even have to? Hmm, I'm thinking about this. Let's let's try to use the existing system. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use um, here an explosion. I'm gonna create more particles, more particles, uh, and I'm gonna create. Uh, I'm gonna use basically the same code uh, to just duplicate thirty additional particles. But with these particles, I'm gonna set them to my p dot spark. I'm going to create a new property called spark. I'm going to set it to true. So some particles are going to have the spark property to true. And what I want to do is for the spark particles, I want them to be rendered as a single dot, not as a, a circle. And we're going to see how that looks. So now in the draw function, here's where we're drawing the particles, right? And here's the circle that actually draws our particle. We're gonna do an if statement if my p dot spark then. And remember, if the spark is set to nil, if it, this property is not set at all, it's just gonna be the same thing as if we set my p dot spark is set to false. Nil is the same as false in this case. Uh, and so in this case, we would just get the regular circle, but otherwise we're gonna do a p set. So P set is uh, setting a single pixel, right? Um, and my PX, my PY is okay. The size doesn't matter in this case, uh, but PC, that's the color, that does matter. Actually, for the sparks, we're gonna actually set the, uh, we're gonna make them always white. The sparks, for now, I think. Let's try that. Um, yeah, let's run this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is good. I love it already. <laughs> so, I mean, just add more particles, right? Um, so I like it, um, but I don't like how um, they kind of like stay stay around. I want them to kind of like blow out uh, quicker. I want them to move faster. So um, this is going to be about this here. No, I, I actually um, I edited the last video and I noticed I, I'm being a bit silly about how I do this. This is there's just such an easy way of doing this and I'm, I'm just gonna fix this right now. Um, so R and D uh, minus 0 0.5 multiplied times six. That's the, that's the correct way of doing this, right? I have, why, why didn't I do this immediately? So basically this kind of like shifts the random numbers into, into numbers that go from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 
uh, where zero is kind of like in the center. So it'll go with negative or positive. And then I can just tweak this number to tweak the speed of the particles. And so let's we'll see how that looks. So now, right now they're pretty pretty slow, but I'm gonna make them twice as fast. Yeah. See. <laughs> this looks awesome. Oh yeah, baby. That's an explosion right there. <laughs> oh, I'm having so much fun with this explosion. <laughs> I'm gonna be making a bit small. I'm concerned that the explosion's a bit big. Ah, this looks so good. This explosion looks so nice. Um, maybe a bit less, 20, just 20. Yeah, 20 looks fine too. Like, you don't, you don't need that many. It just like adds a bit more flavor. Ah, I love it. And now that we have those, I can't stop myself. <laughs> So, what if we're going to create a new function? Uh, first of all, let me copy this. Let me copy this part. This is important. Let me copy this. This this, this sparks. And this is sparks um, from um, the explode function, right? I'm going to copy this this entire for next loop. I'm going to create a new function down here, and this function is going to be uh, s. s uh, how do they call it? Small, small spark. Um, S X S Y. Uh, we're gonna paste this function here, um, and here the X we're gonna make S X, and uh, Y is gonna set to gonna set to S Y. Uh, it's basically the same function from the explosion uh, explosion function removed and uh, set to its own little uh, function here. It, this is overkill. We're going to tweak this down a little bit, but I want to trigger this. I want it to maybe sometimes generate sparks that fly away when the enemy gets hit. So it kind of looks like like maybe parts or bits are flying off when you hit the enemy. So I'm going to take this. <laughs> it's going to be a bit overkill. Um, and we're going to put it in update function when the enemy gets hit. Uh, here, the enemy gets hit, so this is where a small shockwave happens. And this is also where we're gonna do a small spark. Oh, we call this small spa. That's a German supermarket <laughs> chain. It's supposed to go, be called small spark. Um, right, so small spark. And I want to spawn this at the center of the enemy. My n dot x plus four, my n dot y plus four. You know, uh, just the same thing as when we're exploding an enemy, just like this different function. Now, if we do this, it's going to be too much. You can see like there's a, too many uh, particles flying away, but you get the idea, right? Like if we're hitting enemies, it looks like like there are, there are particles flying away. Um, now I'm going to tweak this a little bit. First of all, we don't need that many. I actually probably two might, might be enough. Yeah. And actually I want them to be actually faster. I'm going to make them 20, something like this, because they're really supposed to fly. Maybe a bit too much now. They're too much now. Let's go back to 15. No, too much still. I, they, they, 10 might, was good after all. Um, and also uh, with the Y value, I then want them rather to fly upwards because the bullets are coming from the down. They hit the enemy and I want then the, the kind of like the bits and pieces to fly away, like in the same direction the bullet was flying in. And that means I want them to rather to fly upwards which means I want them to be biased uh, into like negative, basically. So let's do, instead of the 0 0.5 here, we're gonna do um, on, the, on the Y, we're gonna do um, one. So we take a, a number from zero to one, positive. We subtract one. So we're gonna get the number from minus one to zero. 
and then we're gonna multiply it with the speed and so forth. So let's see how that works. Yeah, that looks, that looks better. a bit too fast because now they're kind of twice as fast, basically. Uh, get it down to five. Yeah, that's good, maybe. Um, maybe even slower. Yeah, maybe even slower. I think they're a bit too fast. And I want them to be rather rare. So actually, maybe we're gonna delete the entire for for next loop and just spawn a single bit. They're a bit too frequent, I feel. Yeah, that's good. All right, this is good. This is good. So we added a whole bunch of particle effects additionally on top of the particles effects that we already had. But I think this really helps out. This really helps out making things look really nice and juicy. So we really, really have now the sound of, oh, by the way, what, how, how does the, oh yeah, the shockwave effect when we get hit also looks awesome. Yeah, that's good. Can I get your go game over? Did we, did we implement this? We did, good. Right, so let us do some to-do stuff. I want to think about general game flow. Um, how, you know, how can we, for example, right now you can actually win the game. So how does that work? I want to think about, you know, generally how things work. And as I do think things, I also want to think about music. We don't have any music whatsoever right now. So let's think about music. And I want to also have multiple enemies. Things I want to have. Let me think about other things. Maybe, I mean, that's kind of like part of multiple enemies. I want to have also big enemies. I want to have a boss. Oh, one important thing. I want enemies to shoot bullets at me. So enemy bullets. Okay, so just throw down a bit of a to-do list, a bit of a like, like general things that we want to wrap up before we've like, these things, these things are the things that we have to think about before we finish this game. But for now, let us move on to the doggy zone. Okay, so for today's doggy zone, I mean, we experimented a lot with hit effects and so forth. So I want to still want to, would love to see like what you guys came up with. Like this is not, not just like the only way to, this is like, this is what I want wanted to have. I want to have the particles coming out of the enemy. You know, I want to have like the shock waves and so forth. This is something I wanted to have. But maybe that's not something that you want to have. So, and, and you want to maybe tweak things around. Maybe the sparks look differently. Maybe you left the sparks away, but you focus on something else. I want to see what you guys came up with. So, so again, post it on, on Twitter. I always look on Twitter when, when I get tagged or post it on the Discord channel. We have a little Discord channel where you can post uh, animated GIFs of your stuff, your progress and get some feedback in. I definitely still want to see this and I still want you to expand, you know, all those, all those beautiful particle effects. So that's still an ongoing goal. But another goal is, so we are approaching this situation where we want to have multiple enemies and I want you to create multiple enemies. I want to actually you sit, you sit down and the way we have like this one enemy, I want you to create at least three more, at least three more. So we have four enemies. Okay. So this is going to be the goal for next time. Just like sit down, think about enemies, think about maybe about what kind of game your game is and what kind of enemies you're fighting and so forth. Uh, yeah, I want you to already prepare for the fact that we are about to get our hands dirty on some gameplay stuff. Okay. Now this is the part where I will say thank you to all those beautiful people on coffee, all the supporters on coffee that made this uh, tutorial series possible. That's right. This video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazy devs. Yeah. All right. So this is, we're approaching the finale, the, the kind of like the, how do you call it? The climax 
of this tutorial. We kind of like got the dirty stuff out of the way. Now we're kind of like wrapping things up. We bring things to a circle. We're closing things up. We have to think about how to turn this little toy that we have here now. We have like really nice little explosions. Enemies are coming towards us. But alas, we need to turn this into a game. And that's something that comes up in the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.